morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops of Oz and I've got a detailed forecast started on the thunderstorm situation through southeast Queensland. We'll also touch on a developing tropical cyclone threat that's going to be well in the east of the Coral Sea. Also looking at another tropical cyclone threat towards the northwest of Western Australia, neither of which are going to be a problem for Australia, but still interesting features to be looking at. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast updates. So if you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. Let's get stuck straight into our most significant threat right now. The thunderstorm outlook there is now beginning to look rather interesting. So as we push things out towards this weekend, tomorrow may bring a thunderstorm or two to parts of northeastern New South Wales. We may also see a thunderstorm or two later this afternoon and this evening through parts of the northeast of New South Wales and the southeast areas of Queensland. In fact, today may see a weak storm develop somewhere in this black circle, but I wouldn't really be betting the farm on it at this point in time. A very difficult kind of, I guess, outbreak of pulse thunderstorms to forecast and most certainly nothing that is going to become severe, but it is a slim chance at this point in time. Now, Saturday is going to bring a couple of thunderstorms here and there to northern central New South Wales around Dubbo, Cobar, up towards Lightning Ridge and then south towards Orange. We may also see a thunderstorm or two through parts of the Hunter region around Newcastle and Cessnock down to Singleton and maybe even a storm or two into the Sydney area as well on Saturday. But overall conditions are not very favourable for thunderstorm activity. Very, very low convective available potential energy values around the 200 or the 500 mark in the central parts of New South Wales and not to mention a very dry atmosphere as well. So thunderstorms are very much going to struggle into the central New South Wales. Uh, this cape does increase, though, as you can see, through parts of the northern New South Wales coastline, particularly north of the mid-north coast up into the northeastern slopes. You can see cape values here, which is our instability, our convective, available potential energy, and a key metric to estimating thunderstorm severity and intensity and uh, the potential for severe thunderstorms as well really does spike up on Sunday. You can see these numbers here getting up towards 3,000 around Coffs Harbour and outside of Kempsey. In fact, increasing above 3,000 thousand just outside of Nabucca Head. So we're overall already talking about a very favourable environment for severe thunderstorm activity on Saturday, uh, Sunday rather, and I definitely reckon that somewhere in it, this black circle is going to pick up some nasty, mean, severe thunderstorms and some powerful ones at that. There is a very dangerous severe thunderstorm risk in this area, which means giant hailstones, destructive winds and locally intense rainfall. And this is going to be after about three or four o'clock in the afternoon, starting from Tyree and Kempsey, and then moving up at around four or five o'clock up towards Coffs Harbour and Grafton. But then once thunderstorms begin developing towards the north of Grafton, they should be substantially weaker. We will see an initial thunderstorm outbreak through parts of the scenic rim. These thunderstorms could get quite strong, particularly earlier into the afternoon of Sunday, around 3 or 4 o'clock through this part of southeastern Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales. But they should just be a severe thunderstorm risk as opposed to a very dangerous thunderstorm risk. This is important, though, because it has a massive ramification on the thunderstorm outbreak later and is, for the most part, good news for the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area because as we continue to play this forward, you can see these thunderstorms out into central uh, Queensland here, they do begin to get themselves going and then they should upscale after about five o'clock into this large uh, uh, consolidated squall line and then march out towards the east. Thunderstorms also continue to consolidate through this part of New South Wales as they march up towards the northeast and you can see for the most part they're expected to be a little bit weaker as we get towards our later evening and nighttime hours after about seven or eight o'clock at night. Uh, and then once these thunderstorms do cross in towards southeast Queensland, because we have seen thunderstorm activity earlier on into the day if storms do develop into the scenic rim those temperatures are going to fall instability levels are going to fall and overall the environment is going to become a lot more stable through this part of the scenic rim and southeastern queensland in general and that means that you can see these squall lines that are going to move in towards the southeast corner of queensland are going to be stronger further inland and further towards the north including toowoomba up towards kingaroy through the wyvernhoe outlook for example and then inland from the sunshine coast as we get in towards early monday morning but will be comparatively weaker through parts of the southeast queensland area so a key takeaway here and something to be watching out for very closely is thunderstorms developing around three to five o'clock in the evening through parts of the scenic rim and through southeast Queensland because if these thunderstorms do get themselves going whilst in themselves they're not expected to be Brisbane or Gold Coast threats they will reduce the threat of thunderstorms that are going to come through later on into the afternoon and the evening. Now, some of these squall lines could be strong. In fact, there is a severe thunderstorm risk for these squalls, which could be carrying damaging winds and heavy rainfall in at this red outline here. Now, that does include northern areas of Toowoomba, including Highfields, and then through parts of the Wyvernhoe Outlook, Chinchilla, Kingaroy, Dolby, Taroom, Idesvold, and Injun, although the chances do start to reduce once you get north of about Chinchilla and Kingaroy uh, for the severe thunderstorm risk. And then, of course, we have our severe thunderstorm risk as well, right down through New South Wales from these squall lines. But a bit of a corridor here through parts of the Brisbane and the Gold Coast 
risk area. This could change, so take this with a pinch of salt, and on Sunday we're going to revise this forecast and say what we are expecting in terms of powerful thunderstorms through here, but I think the chance of powerful severe thunderstorms is greater further towards the north and the south compared to the chance that it is for the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area at this point in time. It's a pretty favourable setup for these squally thunderstorms. We've also got a very good chance of seeing some pretty impressive lightning displays as well. You can see the more intense lightning is down through parts of the northeast of New South Wales. We've got some pretty dense lightning displays down here. Once we start getting numbers above 10 to 15, we're really talking about some pretty consistent and almost constant flashing from some of these thunderstorms. We're getting close to those numbers here just outside of Lismore and some pretty solid lightning activity also expected towards the north of Toowoomba. So uh, if you are around the Ipswich area, look out towards the west. If you're on the Gold Coast, look down towards the south. There could be some good lightning displays kind of anywhere between these corridors that I'm drawing it right now through here and also through up here. Now the Sunshine Coast unfortunately appears to miss out on a lot of these thunderstorms, which is bad news because the Sunshine Coast does need a little bit of rainfall. We're starting to see some sort of moisture values dip below what they normally should be at this time of the year through parts of the Sunshine Coast. And while some strong thunderstorm activity would be welcome, definitely not expecting severe thunderstorm activity, which is good news. But these thunderstorms will definitely be some good news for the Sunshine Coast if they did come through. Now, as we push things out and towards Monday, I'm starting to see a little bit of interest in Monday's outbreak. We could be talking about another high-end day through Southeast Queensland on Monday, but there are a few things I would like to get out of the way first of all, and that is going to be high cloud coverage because, as we know, after severe thunderstorm outbreaks the night before, we're left with a lot of cloud coverage in the atmosphere, and you can see that is going to be no different as we wake up on Monday morning. Clouds are expected to be between 95 to 100% of the sky across parts of Southeast Queensland, extending out towards Warwick and Toowoomba as well, and you can see those temperatures, they struggle to rise when we're talking about high cloud coverage. So we get through Monday, the temperatures rocket up very quickly through parts of central Queensland into the high 30s and early 40s through Monday morning and into early Monday afternoon. And that's because we've got no cloud coverage there. But when we're talking about this high cloud coverage, as you know, the sun can't bear down as intense uh, on these high cloud covered areas. And that means that it just doesn't get as warm. There's not as much instability and thunderstorms as a result struggle to develop. It's what killed off Sunday's out uh, Saturday's outbreak last week. It's also what killed off Thursday last week as well. These high cloud coverage days can really put a spanner in the works for a severe thunderstorm forecast. And we are going to be talking about a bit of cloud through Monday morning, which could throw our thunderstorm forecast into jeopardy. So I'm only going to briefly run over this very quickly, but we could be talking about some potentially strong severe thunderstorms in this area of Queensland. So including the Granite Belt and the Darling Downs, Toowoomba, Warwick, parts of the Scenic Rim, maybe even some of the western suburbs of Brisbane out towards Ipswich, and then over the border into pockets of northeast and New South Wales as well, right down to about Texas and Stanthorpe on the Queensland side of things. We could be talking about a potentially remote chance of a high and severe thunderstorm outbreak. Our convective available potential energy values are okay. They would be better if we were talking about uh, no cloud coverage, particularly earlier on into the morning. You can see these Cape Valleys getting up to about 2,000, which is enough for a high end severe thunderstorm outbreak, but it's not going to be enough to cut the mustard for some giant hailstones or destructive winds, for example. So really touch and go on the forecast here. As long as that dry line can kind of hold itself a little bit further inland where that cloud coverage is going to be a little bit less of a concern, we could be talking about some gnarly thunderstorms around the Toowoomba and the Warwick area. But the key takeaway here is Monday's a day to watch, but not one to be acting upon at this point in time. I imagine I'll have answers on Monday's forecast tomorrow morning, uh, if at the absolute latest on about Sunday morning, uh, because at this point in time, Monday is looking like it could shape up to be a cracker day for thunderstorms, or it could be an absolute bummer of a day for thunderstorms. Either way you cut it though, Brisbane and the Gold Coast are not likely to see very dangerous thunderstorms on Sunday or Monday, which is most certainly good news and some news that they were very much looking out for, that's for sure. Now, we do get a couple of days of relatively calmer conditions, a few thunderstorms possible on Tuesday and Wednesday through parts of central and northern New South Wales. Those continue out to about the 12th of uh, December on Friday. And then we start to see a bit of a southeasterly flow chip in here through the Coral Sea. And that's because we're going to be talking about the potential for a tropical cyclone developing out here into the Solomon Sea. So this is going to be a key player on the forecast. And I'll touch on this in just a second, but the key takeaway here is that we're going to be seeing these easterly winds begin to pick up. And instead of this dry air coming out of the west, we're going to be talking about these moist conditions coming out of the east, which will keep temperatures a little bit cooler, but it'll definitely ramp up the humidity through parts of southeastern Queensland. And we're going to be talking about a lot of convective-based thunderstorms through parts of central and interior parts of Queensland as these easterly winds from the Pacific Ocean really sweep through into central Queensland. So a lot of thunderstorm activity is expected out there after about the 12th of December. And this should last basically the duration of this tropical cyclone's intensification process, which is going to take to about the 16th of December to really wind back. So we're expecting a significant uptick in rainfall 
be very hit or miss because we're talking about pulse-based thunderstorms. Severe thunderstorm risk is going to be there as well through parts of central Queensland, through the southeast, a bit more of a coin toss at this point in time. But just your heads up right now that we are going to be heading into that higher precipitation period through parts of southeastern Queensland that we have been talking about over the last couple of days. And just pulling things back to actually right now, we can look at this right now. We are beginning to see this monsoonal flow enhanced through parts of PNG and into the Timor Sea and the Arafura Sea as well. Lots and lots of thunderstorm activity, lots and lots of rain activity. In fact, we've already seen some substantial rainfall accumulations through parts of northern and far northern Queensland in the last three days. And all of this is part of our uh, climate drivers, which are moving it from the west out towards the east. And you're going to be seeing this rainfall really hold on over the next couple of days. You can see lots and lots of shower and thunderstorm activity and even a couple of low pressure systems here and there meandering around as we get out towards the weekend. And then these tropical waves really do enhance, moving into the Solomon Sea through early next week and then beginning to build after about the 10th of December. And this is when we're going to begin watching the Solomon Sea for the potential for tropical cyclone genesis. In fact, you can see it here. We begin to see this tropical low uh, begin to develop as we get out to about the 12th of December here. And then this eventually becomes our, trop our next tropical cyclone. Most likely at this point in time, we're looking at tropical cyclone genesis here from major forecast modeling. And you can see as we push this forecast out, this does become a substantial risk to Vanuatu and New Caledonia. Lots and lots of rainfall is expected and maybe even a strong tropical cyclone as well in the making there. The GFS forecast model is really keen on this system becoming a strong tropical cyclone. But I would like to say, keep the GFS in mind as a model to be taken with a hefty pinch of salt because now we've got this strong tropical cyclone here coming down through Vanuatu and into New Caledonia. Whereas the GFS a couple of days ago had this system coming into the Australian coastline as a category five. So the GFS is still one to be taken with a heavy pinch of salt, but I can safely say that there is no risk to the Queensland coastline at this point in time. And that is a fact that is very unlikely to change. Now this system kind of reminds me of Tropical Cyclone Harold of I believe 2020. I think it was 2020, it could have been 2019. There was a powerful tropical cyclone developed here around this time actually through the Solomon Islands and then went into Vanuatu as a high end category four strength tropical cyclone on the Saffir Simpson hurricane scale. And I believe this system here has got some pretty condi uh, similar conditions and also some similar uh, intensity prospects. It could very much get up towards category three or category four status. And it's going to be a system that I want to watch very, very closely indeed. We'll keep close tabs on this situation here, but for the Australian risk, and generally speaking through the Coral Sea, not really one that I'm uh, considering giving too much airtime because it really isn't a system worth monitoring that closely at this point in time. We also have a separate tropical cyclone development chance through here, south of Indonesia. Uh, the Bureau of Meteorology has marked a 10% chance of development here into the Timor Sea, adjacent to the Arafura Sea towards the north of the Northern Territory. And that's gonna be tracking this general direction here before moving out into uh, the northern parts of the Indian Ocean here, adjacent to the the Indonesian uh, subregion and then heading out in towards the Indonesia and then over towards the Cocos Keeling Islands and Christmas Island, where it may eventually become a tropical cyclone, but chances are very much working against this system here. And also, again, not much of a West Australian risk at at all. There's really not much risk at all from this tropical cyclone. So even if it does develop, it's not really worth that much in the way of airtime. It will still work to enhance shower and thunderstorm activity through the Kimberley region and the top end of the Northern Territory. So after about the 10th of December or so, out to about the 15th through even the 16th of December, expect enhanced shower and thunderstorm activity through parts of Northern Northern Territory and also into the Kimberley region as well. So we'll keep close tabs on that too, but I don't expect anything too crazy to be materializing as a result of that. And generally speaking, it is a wetter picture. It's a wetting picture across Northern parts of Australia. The areas across Southern Australia really not picking up on this rainfall at this point in time, you can see major forecast models are still pretty much flip-flopping as to how much rainfall certain places are going to be getting. And I guess pretty much everywhere uh, on the southern side of this black line here is really going to be missing out on the bulk of this rainfall here. So this includes the southern parts of WA, much of South Australia, pockets of southwestern Queensland, and even the southern parts of the NT as well. Western Victoria and Melbourne are also not expecting too much in the way of rainfall. And Tassie is for once expected to be a little bit on, on the dry side over the next two weeks or so. So it is a bit more of a drying picture and definitely a bit more of a summer picture now, a bit more of a summer outlook. New South Wales remaining wet though, because we are going to be talking about, like I said, that easterly flow coming in off the Pacific Ocean. That's going to result in a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity. And not to mention the shower and thunderstorm activity that's going to bubble up on Sunday. High precipitation storm modes are most certainly going to be the go. So we will be watching those quite closely. But anyways, that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. If you have enjoyed it, then please you consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, the support lately has been massively appreciated. So if you haven't already, it's a great time to get on 
on board. Go check out the Facebook page as well. Lots more information coming out over there today as well. And I'll have a second update on the thunderstorm situation later this afternoon and this evening. I'm thinking I should take maybe a week to go back to those once a day uploads. So maybe next week, hopefully, uh, thunderstorms aren't too much of a concern as we get back towards next week. But twice daily updates are going to continue as these thunderstorms remain an imminent threat. But that's going to do it for me today. A massive thank you to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.